city of Austin, Texas. One of these drivers has got to set the tone in this new land of the unknown. It's pole day. Teams have worked tirelessly as they look to make their mark on new territory. These cars are hopped up. And now it's in the driver's hands to show up and show out. To claim their positions in the starting lineup. So who will lead the pack through the twists and turns of today's road race? <laughs> wow. Let's find out in qualifying. Get ready for one of the most interesting and exciting qualifying sessions you're ever going to see in the NASCAR Cup Series. Welcome to Circuit of the Americas. Sorry, yes, so There's that nearly 300 foot tall observation tower. Great view from there of this 3.6 mile road course heavy overcast and threat of rain yes they have Goodyear rain tires available if needed and we'll see what happens 25 minutes in this first session and then 12 drivers will have a runoff 10 minute runoff to see how they sit on the pole Clint what are you looking forward to we well, see our boys taking the track and let me tell you something what I'm worried about is risk versus reward I was out there the last time I was out there Jeff I was on rain tires <laughs> rain everywhere track was wet I was slipping and sliding around tons of grip right now how much am I willing to risk NASCAR's most successful road racer ever. <laughs> Jeff Gordon's going to take us around this really unique circuit. Well, first of all, I'm excited that qualifying is back. And what a qualifying yes. session it ought to be. One of the most technical and difficult road courses and a new road course to all of these drivers. So let's take you and show you how many shifts and the geared selection that they're going to have. They're going to start in third gear as they come across that start finish line. Elevation up the hill to turn one all the way down to first gear. Now coming down the hill through the S's second gear all the way to turn nine then they'll go to third down the hill heavy braking section down to first gear and 11 long launch down the back straightaway second third here's the only section on this racetrack you're going to see fourth gear but immediately over 180 miles an hour down to first gear turn 12 you'll never see a road course yet that's been on the schedule where you run first gear this many times through this many sections as you see 13 14 15 all first gear at here in coda compared to any other track then second gear all the way to that last corner turn 20 down to first gear again and we do it again man what a track this is for these drivers and by the way that's in the drive i it's gonna be crazy <laughs> Jeff, you said 187 mile an hour down to 100 uh, down to 47 mile an hour that is a huge change that that's that risk versus reward I'm talking about. How much are these will these guys willing to go for it? And is it going to hurt them or are it's they going to be hurt on their the hand? Blisters. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to Regan. Well, you guys talk risk reward, not just for the drivers or crew chiefs as well. A number of strategies for this qualifying session. Do you put the tape on the nose and run one lap and put it on your driver to get it right? Or do you take the tape off the nose, let your driver get two laps, get into a rhythm? Many of these guys have yet to hit these corners. Every crew chief, every session this track is so winding and twisting and folds back on itself several times it takes three spotters to guide each driver around this track for one lap you, trying to figure out how much grip is in this racetrack right now is on all these guys minds I just saw Kyle Larson slip up you see uh, Ryan Blaney right here I'm talking massive difference in grip level from what they had last time they're on the race well, and, I, right and, now. and to that point Clint the advantage goes to those guys that have run in the uh, Xfinity series yesterday the only time that this track has been under dry conditions was yesterday in that race Kyle Busch won that event does he have an advantage here's turn 12 for Chase Elliott all the way down to first gear and as you mentioned Clint all, even all the way down to 40 miles per hour right there for Chase Elliott they ran the truck race before the Xfinity race yesterday and one of the truck team owners asked me uh, walking by at dinner last night he says how'd you like our swim meet <laughs> <laughs> hey listen that truck was race was spectacular yes. because they had it all right. they had wet conditions then they had drying conditions they had to extend those wet tires and wear them out all the way to the finish the other thing to point out right here is we're watching Chase Elliott yes we're talking about them getting a feel for this racetrack a grip level but that grip level goes away with every corner with every lap you make I'm thinking this first lap on this racetrack is going to be Oh, Chase Elliott. No, no. He just aborted no, no. right he's, there. He's good because oh, that's right. that's we right. are not using the regular start finish line for practice and qualifying. If and you, you can see our... his posted lap is a 214. 
So normally on ovals, start finish, but this turn, uh, loop 18, just before the pit entrance is where we are timing for qualifying. Uh, and, and that's going to be back out in, in uh, between turns 18 and 19. Right there, you can see yeah, that yeah. white line. That's the... Uh, hey. And I love this you idea brought up by this, NASCAR. You brought up this point, Jeff. How much did that practice session in Xfinity help these guys for today? Austin Cindric was in that race on top of the... He is the heat so far. And, and wow. We, you know, he has a lot of road racing experience. And as you mentioned, that experience from the Xfinity race yesterday, a Penske car. So this, uh, this young man should be able to shine here this weekend. Now let's explain why NASCAR made this change after looking at what other road racing organizations have done at this and other circuits. Tyler Reddick to the top of the board over Austin Sindrick. You don't want a driver to come past start finish and then trying to save his tires for round two coast around a whole lap and be in somebody's way. So when you have the timing line just before the pit entrance that takes all that out of play and it's a great move by NASCAR. And here's exactly what we're talking about. See Denny Hamlin, Joey Logano running together. A little lockup by Denny Hamlin. That's yeah, something that's that you cool. don't want to do as you're coming to the green. Very, if you lock up a tire here, it's a long. Well, I mean, that hurt, that hurt the 11's lap. Look what it did yep. to the 22's lap for having to wait on him to get it gathered up and go. So the timing clock starts and stops coming out of turn number 18 before the pit entrance. And uh, that is a big change, and we're going to see that now and into the future when we have qualifying on road courses. William Byron coming around to start his lap. We talk about the ringers. There's the ringer up on top of the board right now. A.J. Allmendinger currently first at a 2.13.49. Now we saw him. I see his teammate right there, Kyle Larson. He went around for another lap. I don't know if he was doing that on purpose or he missed pit road. I don't know what or happened. He, or there. he forgot that they do the timing over between eight. Uh, yeah, that's 18 and 19. That's going to be hard on his tires. Hard for him to run another lap, but he's still sitting fourth. So now half of the Joe Gibbs team has not yet been out on track. Regan? Well, I just watched the 18 car, Kyle Busch, who was in that Xfinity race yesterday, Mike, roll down pit road, assumed that maybe he would be one of the later cars to go out, waiting for open track. What I thought was very interesting, though, his teammate, Christopher Bell, in the 20 car, followed him out. Christopher Bell, yet to turn any laps dry on the dry course, as we see Kyle there, thought maybe that he might be using that as an opportunity to follow his teammate and learn the breaking points. Absolutely. That's the one I'd be following. He was extremely <laughs> fast. Lights out yesterday in the Xfinity race. Bet your bottom dollar. That's that's one I'd follow. Nine drivers in yesterday's race are competing today, including four of the first five finishers, led by Kyle Busch. And William Byron starting his qualifying lap. He was the fastest car, of course, in full wet conditions yesterday in practice. Coming into the S's, as you see in the upper right, we'll follow him around. And you can already see uh, you know, he's trying to make up some time. He's learning the grip right now. You could tell he, he could have gotten into turn one. That's that uphill uh, turn one heavy braking. You can drive very deep into that corner because of that elevation. You see, he got a little bit behind even in the first corner. Now he's trying to make it up. And here's the hard part about these S's. The last one here is the tightest one. So you can't achieve a rhythm in the S's and pick up speed, you've got to scrub speed off all the way to the end of it. Most S's that you've been on a road course with, Clint, it's, it, it's this flow where you really attack those S's. Yeah. This is complete opposite. You can attack the beginning, but you better start pulling yourself back because of how tight those apexes are at the end. It really causes you, it draws you in to overdrive the back half of those S's. Very, very easy to overdrive that. And you can see our times right now. You got Christopher Bell putting up a good lap, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harvick, all drivers that ran that Xfinity, uh, sorry, not Bell, but Kyle Busch and Harvick ran that Xfinity race yesterday. Extra practice. And that's why they ran it, Jeff. 
How surprised do you think these drivers are? You looked at the forecast all weekend long, or all uh, week long. You realized, or you thought, it's going to be raining for qualifying. It's going to be raining for this race. And now we have dry conditions. How many of these guys you think are caught by surprise by this? It's a great point. And it's so hard as a race car driver. We're, we're all, you know, head cases. you got to have your <laughs> your head or your mind made up of what, what conditions I'm going to have. It's going to be dry. It's going to be wet. I don't care. I just want to know. I don't want it to be both. I need to have my head right so I know the grip level that I'm attacking. Talk about grip level. We already started and stated this, but these guys are seeing this grip level on this racetrack, some of them for the first time. All of them weren't in that Xfinity race, Jeff. All of them didn't come here and practice either. So Byron completed his lap in fourth behind Almendinger, Reddick, and Sendrick. Just trying to be in that top 12, make it to round two, and then watch those clouds of what is going to happen here. NASCAR says if it rains between rounds, they'll make a judgment call whether or not to conduct that second round on rain tires in the wet among those 12 drivers for the poll. And this is a very abrasive racetrack. I think we need to point that out that your entire strategy in this race is going to be very interesting. But for qualifying such a long lap, so much that you take, as you see the car control right here with Kyle Busch sliding the rear of this car around through, uh, that's, that's turn uh, coming in to turn 15. And then out of that, this very four apex 16 17 18 complex to 19 harvick to six that uh that's a, a, a good bit better than he was yesterday in practice and and kind of to my point was it's going to be hard to make more than one lap or to go out a second time unless you had a big mistake because of the tires how much they fall off with this abrasive race let me tell track. you how good that practice session was that little practice session he had in xfinity he was 32nd on speed chart yesterday in practice now he went to the top six calling racing aj allmendinger fastest in round one so far Chastain just uh, going by the start finish stripe for qualifying. That is the line that determines when your lap starts and stops. So he is on a flyer. He's already made one lap and now he's trying to bust into the top 12 to go on to round two. And what you don't want to do is what we just saw at Ross Chastain. He locked up the right front tire coming to uh, 19 and, and coming onto the front straightaway. Love this shot right here. These cars come uphill, but boy, how it changes so dramatic and goes off camber as you make that left-hand turn. Yeah, they call it a tabletop uh, where turn one is because it's completely flat after that sharp uphill braking zone. The other thing I heard right there, it, did you hear how low RPM that <laughs> thing was? That's how hard it is to gear these cars for this track, how fast it is down that back straightaway, how slow it is in a turn like one. And like, oh, well, oh. And, and you're, because you're a four-speed transmission, you're always trying to find the best way to shift the least amount of time. So they're carrying first gear very far in some sections. That means it's going to bog down in a section like turn one. Well, they're going to they're going to finish this session, whether or not Regan. Well, Mike, one of the cars I mentioned off the top of the show that decided to make two laps, Denny Hamlin, actually found a problem while he was out there with his race car. You see the hood up right now. The power steering is locking up as he goes from left to right, turning back and forth while he was on the racetrack. They came in, opened up the power steering reservoir, topped off the fluid, replacing some of that right now. Hopefully they can get this resolved before the race. I don't want to have that, Jeff. No. Not here. No, you are working that steering wheel a lot through this race course and those 20 turns. Hey, Regan. Play Misty for me. What's it like out there? <laughs> Well, Mike, it's, uh, it, it's interesting. There's been some mist rolling through the front stretch here where Pit Road is. Every time it happens, you see every crew chief look up in the air and kind of have those big beady eyes like, uh oh, what's, what's going to happen with this weather right now? So there's definitely some dark clouds. And, uh, man, it's a guessing game for everybody as to if it's going to stay dry or if we're going to get a little bit more weather here. Well, one thing we saw in practice yesterday, we had full wet, folks. It was a downpour if you didn't watch that oh. practice session. And they ran uh, the full time in the wet tires. Well, on the wet tires so this track can handle a lot of water we didn't have much running water uh, coming across the racetrack so even a light mist I think this track is gonna be fine with these dry tires so we're watching the bubble here Cole Custer Kurt Busch at uh, 215.3 plus and trying to see if anybody can break through into that top dozen they've got eight minutes to go 
And there's the bubble battle. Bubble There's the bubble battle <laughs> at the bottom of the screen on the right. Very tricky corner right here. See Matty D rolling through fast, but like a four apex down, way down to a sharp corner there. Run off. That's the coolest thing that I've, this track affords a driver that most of our tracks that we go to on a road course don't. Tons of runoff here. And you see to Benedetto, he, he improved his time slightly. He's in 18th, two minute 15.85, but he's going to go again, try to try to even improve. It'll be hard to do on that. That tells me times. he didn't get it all that right. first lap. That turn 19 is like the old turn 4A at Sonoma, where the racing line was way off <laughs> the racing surface. Same thing here. Well, you, you know, a driver and a race car is looking for every bit of room that they can possibly find, and the momentum of that car and the inertia is just taking you wide, so go with it. If there's no track limits in those situations, then go for it. And, and that's the thing about a big, heavy stock car on that little tire. You know, much different type of cars that we normally see at this racetrack, Formula One, Indy cars, even the GT cars. These cars move around so much, and you have to slide them. You have to yaw them out and go over the top of curbs. Now look down on the right. Austin Dillon has gone green. He may bump in here as he's on this long straightaway, connecting turns 11 and 12. You said 11. We're only halfway through the lap, <laughs> boys. We got a lot of racing left. I know. But he did a great job launching off of turn 11 and improved if he can get in the braking zone here into 12. Nice apex there for Austin Dillon. Continues to improve on his lap time. Bowman Stenhouse trying to bump in and knock Cole Custer out of the top dozen. This very tight complex here. You can tell how tight these lap times are and how technical this track is. You go from, look, he's almost back flat. Now he's three tenths to the good, two tenths. That's how much that moves as you travel through this track. But to, yeah, to your point, Clint, man, you know, if you use too much of the tires here in the early part of this uh, of this racetrack, you're going to pay the price here later. Austin Dillon, look at that, six hundredths of a second to get himself into 11th. Bowman putting a nice lap together behind him. So Cole Custer is bumped out. Kurt Busch now on the bubble against Bowman, Briscoe, and Almirola. Kyle Busch and company talking about A.J. Allmendinger's lap that is currently quickest. Uh, really good. I don't know where. I'm sure it's fine half a second, but I don't really know where half a second is. Yeah. Roger that. A little bit everywhere, isn't it, Jeff? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's it. If you could just get a couple hundreds in every corner, think about how much that adds up over 20 of those corners. Here's Bowman still carrying that speed. He's going to cross the line right there. He moves up He's to in. eighth. In eighth. That knocks out Kurt Busch and Austin Dillon moves to the bubble. About five minutes left to go in round one. That's the view from turn one back toward the start finish line and pit road and the sweeps. Denny Hamlin on the move. Trying to bump into the top dozen. Hamlin is currently 28th after running a long timed lap. I don't think that's the turn one Danny ahead. was looking for. You saw that he turned in pretty early, went a little wide, missed the apex. Having some power steering issues that we talked about, covered that, that's going to play a role. They're going to have to get that nibbed in the butt here because I'm telling you, it's that's that's a major issue going into this track. And I'd be surprised if just adding power steering fluid is going to fix that problem. Yeah, usually that's a steering box issue or something like that. Not just air in the line or something. Picked up a little time in the S's. And now dropping back just a I, bit I, here. I, guys, the... I think he's still having some power steering issues. Because as soon as he got into that left-right switchback, that's when he started losing time. Look how wide he goes off of turn 10, down to heavy braking turn 11. You gotta remember, he's already ran an extra lap, too. It's on his third lap He right made up here. some time there, though. That was really good if he didn't quite get the launch, but he certainly got into the braking zone deep. So there's four drivers out of five on track right now who have a chance to bump in. Austin Dillon on the bubble. Yeah, and, and Logano Bell, Chase Elliott in ninth. Got a good run down that long straightaway, Mike. You've been saying how important it is to get off of that corner to get that shot down the straightaway. Carried momentum and speed gained all the way down. Oh, I love riding on board on the roof cam. 
This Monster Energy Chevrolet on Kurt Busch coming down the hill. This is turn 10, really fast kink down the hill. I like what I'm seeing here. Got to get this right right here because it leads on to, as Clint just said, the longest straightaway here. He missed a little bit right there. I, I agree, Jeff. Just can't keep it down. Lost almost all of it right there. Hamlin, a matter of hundreds and now tenths. Yeah, you start, this yep. is where it's 18. hard to make up time. You get to this point of the track. Chase Elliott on the left of your screen. Custer goes in to 10th. Cole Custer bumps back in. Logano's out. Didn't, Bell to the bubble. Kurt Busch is on a heck of a lap as well. Denny Hamlin did not improve. I mean, he improved, that, but not enough. This is that bubble atmosphere that I miss in qualifying. <laughs> These boys are having to go back out. Didn't want to. Wanted to save those tires. These guys from behind are putting the pressure on them. A little bit different line there for Kurt Busch. Staying really tight through turn 15. Chase Elliott bumps in. So Suarez is on the bubble. Blaney goes to eight. There you go. Crosses the line. Kurt Busch moves Kurt to Kurt Busch is in. Kurt Busch is back in. So drivers on course now can finish their laps. Custer on the bubble. Suarez one spot out with Bell and Logano. See Logano really making up a lot of time right now. Wow. As well as Chase Elliott, Christopher Bell. So that, that bottom 10 to 12th is going to change here, I believe, folks, if this stays like this. Remember what a great job Joey did for us Wednesday night on iRacing and taking us around for a lap at speed. He spent a lot of time in the simulator, obviously, and he's got a good handle on what happens here. Nice drive off of 18. Boom, look oh, at that, all the way to fifth. So that, that lap obviously took care of business for this first round, but that's the lap that he did not want to take because when we get to this next round, he's going to be... But I am impressed that they're making these lap times out of this set of tires after running you know, a second time on track. I really thought, Clint, that they were just going to wear these tires out and not have the grip on He's, the second He amount. was able to sit back right to the very end and keep an eye on whether or not they had to go back out, but that being said, cooled those tires off a lot. Christopher Bell to eighth. Chase Elliott back And to Chase ninth. Elliott to ninth. So that puts Bowman on the bubble. And Kurt Busch is the one car left to finish his final lap. And we're done with round one. <laughs> that was fun. That was exciting. Next, the 12 fastest cars from round one will run for the Bush Bowl. Qualifying round one is done. Here are the top 12 that advanced. Five of them were in yesterday's Xfinity race, and one of them, Ryan Blaney, was in the booth for that Xfinity race. Note Alex Bowman with a 14.57. Nips Kurt Busch with a 14.70. Cole Custer, Daniel Suarez, and the rest. And we're going to show you something really cool. Look at the difference between the final lap of Alex Bowman and Kurt Busch. Well, look how far into the corner and much, how much deeper Kurt Busch drives into that braking zone. But he almost overdid it because you see Alex Bowman is now able to pull some of that back. Now, let's watch the driver lines, the difference. Look how Kurt Busch is driving deep in the corner but shallow, and yet the 48 of Alex Bowman is going wide and trying to get a nice drive off the corner. Right here, that's turn 15. Kurt Busch goes shallow, loses speed on the exit to Alex Bowman, who just continues to just maintain that. But then again, through 16, 17, 18 complex, here's Alex Bowman that just gets a little bit better drive to that line. That's the difference between 12th and 13th. And Clint, I love this because it shows how drive off beats dive in. Yep. <laughs> hey, always better to be better off the corner than it is in the corner, especially on a road course where those straightaways are as long as they are. The least little bit costly. We'll talk to Kurt when we come back. Welcome back to Circuit of the Americas as we get ready for round two of qualifying for the Echo Park Grand Prix later today here on FS1. Regan. Well, my Kurt Busch is down here debriefing with Crew Chief Matt McCall right now. Kurt, you saw our video as we went to break there. How difficult is it to go out here, first time dry conditions, hit everything just perfect for a qualifying session? Yeah, I'm a racer, and I just wanted to be in that fast 12 and give my guys in Monster Energy a shot at the pole. And 
to see all this and how it's all broken down with rain yesterday, dry today, six hours of my own simulator work, six hours with the Chevrolet simulator. The fastest lap I had ever run here before was a 217. So to be three seconds quicker today with a real car, I like the real car. <laughs> all this sim stuff, it, it gets you close, but man, I'm a racer. I wanted to be in that last group to have a shot at the pole, but uh, you know, some of those guys back towards the tail end of the top 10 won't have a shot at the pole, but it's, this is uh, the who's who here on, on who's a road racer, and it's, it's neat to see Almendinger up top, Cindric, little brother got laps yesterday. I'll call him a road racer, I guess. But thanks to Monster Energy, uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what the weather brings us later today. You gotta be ready for anything right now. Thanks, sir. Good luck this afternoon. Now, of the 12 drivers who will run for the pole, six of them have a distinct advantage in that they have only one lap on their tires. Those are Kevin Harvick, who we're riding with. Uh, the call it car for A.J. Allmendinger. Uh, Kyle Busch, William Byron, Austin Sindrick only have one lap on their tires, along with the eight. All right, Mike. In front of the show, you asked me what is on my mind as a driver going into this qualifying session, and I said risk versus reward. Now, I'm putting it all out there in the <laughs> table. The worst I'm going to do is 12. Right. I'm going for it. Well, we talk about tires and how important they are, and those that have one lap. Look at these guys. We were just on board there with Kevin Harvick. They are crawling around this 3.4-mile racetrack to try to conserve those tires, conserve the heat in the engine. You hear them shutting the engine off, just trying to get this car ready to make that one lap. I bet they've got it all taped up for maximum downforce and aerodynamics. Yeah, absolutely. No heat in anything. Keep, don't scrub those tires. Don't build any water temperature up in the engine. The only, the only thing going on is their heart rate. It is pumping right now. <laughs> now remember, the start-finish line is here, but the timing line for qualifying is right here before the pit entrance here. So everything is to this line, timing loop number 18, to start and end your lap. I said nothing with heat in it. That's not true. You heard Kevin Harvey put some heat in at the brakes. I want some heat yeah. in it, baby. <laughs> Tim, uh, Tim Sindrick's son, Austin, the Xfinity Series champion. Speaking of the heat, he's bringing it on these boys. It's good to see. I knew this was going to be an awesome opportunity for him, and he's proven that. This is an awesome view from that tower in the infield. And he just crossed the line to begin his lap, and going goes. wide at 19 and headed for 20. Yeah, just carrying as much speed on the exit as he can to get to turn 20 and launch down this front straightaway. Goes wide. Again, that's okay. I don't think that's hurting him. He's climbing the hill on the second longest straightaway on this course. So important to get this section. I also Kevin. noticed on the flip side of this, Kevin Harvick kind of followed A.J. Allmendinger. He's within striking distance, so he can kind of see the line he's running, maybe match him a little bit. Kind of use him as a, as a rabbit out yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. It's a good guy to follow who was fast in that first round. The fastest. See Austin Cindric slide in the back of that. you got to slide the car around through those S's to get the car rotated to try to carry maximum speed. Look at how short he's cutting that over those curves. That yeah, very aggressive on the curving. Got to slide that car. He's sliding the fronts a little bit down hill through 10. Harvick, similar line. Now, if we get rain, that paint is the last place you want to be. There is no grip there when the track <laughs> is wet. He's holding steady there with Almendinger ahead of him. Back straight. Almendinger out ahead of Kevin Harvick in the onboard view. Austin Sendrick finishing up here. Fastest section on this racetrack. We talked about over 180 miles per hour, down to almost one of the slowest sections at 45 miles per hour, maybe even 40. In the stadium section, that's why those big uh, grandstands are there. You can see that whole uh, five-turn complex from those stands. So interesting to me how you can get away with those runoffs in some corners and not others, Jeff. You see him really being aggressive with some runoffs on, on one corner, and then he was... Seemed like he was staying completely off the green. Yeah, we've seen a lot of guys go wide here. He just drops two tires off the right side. Austin Sendrick at 2 minute 13.69. That, that's his first lap time of a 2.13.85.
Oh, yeah, Dinger. look at that. Amadeus getting after it here. A little bit behind our current leader, though. So Almendinger second and Harvick third. So we're seeing where Almendinger actually slowed down a few tenths versus Austin Cedric. He picked up about a tenth and a half. So five of Kyle Larson, big time to the green for over his lap. Seven tenths. How about this? Bam. Larson to the pole. Oh, man, what a lap. Two minute, 13 flat. And here comes Tyler Reddick, who had only one set of one hot lap on his tires. That's a huge lap by Larson. Almost seven tenths faster than Sendrick and Almendinger. Those are Th this for is sure an area ringers that, in a road course. And this is an area really hard to make up time if you're Tyler Reddick because of how much you're using up those tires through this long right hand section. He's doing a nice job, though. It's going to be really close here, about a tenth up on Larson. Yes. Did it. A 12.9 for Reddick to a 13.0 for Larson. Great lap. Heck of a lap. And of course, each time the fastest qualifying mark changes, it's a new track record, <laughs> with this being NASCAR's first visit here. See Kyle Busch? A little bit in the green right here. You know, I always like to see what the track had in it. Let some other guys go out and run, and then tell, show me what I've got to run. What kind of pace? Where do I have to find some extra time? And that's looked like the uh, kind of the, the theory behind this late run on the 18 of Kyle Busch. You know, that's funny you said that because I was opposite. I wanted to just go out and focus on me and my lap. I wanted to do the best I could do, find the grip level, and not be drawn in to trying too hard and messing that up, stepping over the line. Well, and see, I kind of used that opposite. That's probably why you won a lot of races, and I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wanted to use that opposite approach of if the grip is in the track, then then I want to get maximize it. If the, the pace has fallen down in this second round, then I want to know, to yeah. your point, okay, don't overdrive the car. Now Kyle Busch has just one lap on his tires. Uh, Bowman has two. We see uh, Joey Logano just rolled off pit road. Kyle Busch really has lost a lot. Yeah, but of Joey time. Logano and the nine of Chase Elliott had to run that lap right after there, so they tried to cool their tires off as long as they possibly could. Yeah, but the point I want to make with Chase Elliott and Joey Logano with two and a half minutes to go, they can't ease around there. They have to start this lap before the clock gets to zero, so they're going to have to hustle around here just to get the lap started. Yeah, and that's going to take a lot out of those tires, to your point. There, Catch 22. Man. When you let them cool down, you're letting the air pressures down, too, and you have to wait. And, and those two don't. drivers both already have two hot laps on their tires, yeah. two runs. That was that being on that bubble and having to go back out to stay yes. in this top 12. That's just fourth for Kyle Busch. Now they've got two minutes to uh, get to the start line at turn 18, so they should both make it. Well, that's, yeah. and, and remember, it's not all the way around to the start finish line. It's that section off of turn 18. So I think they're 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 going to hit it right at that those last seconds. Ryan Blaney's on his flyer. Hey, how about his dad, Dave Blaney? Yeah, on, a, on the home track, took uh, took the win from Young Hot and Child in the Wing Sprinters. Last thing. lap, I pass, know. by the way. I know. Since uh, I think it was 1998 or something was his last win. So super cool to see yeah. the bullet back in victory lane up there. Dave Blaney still got it. Neat yep. guy. Yes, he yep. did. One of the best sprint car drivers I ever raced against. Learned so much from him. To see him still out there getting it done, that's cool. A lot of talent in that Blaney family. Yep. Dave was a very good cup driver, too. He came one pit stop shy of a victory uh, driving for Bill Davis Racing. Yeah, he was a teammate of mine at RCR. Just a quiet guy, really never seen anything. That's what was so cool about that win last night, the emotion on his face. Interview was good. All right, so Logano 
and Elliott both handily by about 20 seconds made it to start their lap. You're riding with Chase now. You know, they made it just barely, but Chase Elliott's right on the 22. So if that 22 makes a mistake, this is uh, not both of them out in their laps. Yeah, I was, I was with you. I think because of them having to go out so late, they had to be a little bit closer to one another well, than I think Chase Elliott probably wanted. We talked about gearing, and you said it's only a four-speed transmission. Did you hear him bumping the chick getting in there? That's a third gear right there getting him to turn one. Stretching up thing for all it's worth. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, you're about to hear right it again, again. In, in second gear through these S's. And you get to about here and you go, oh, there's another one? You mean there's two more? <laughs> Will these S's ever end? <laughs> well, they do, finally. This quick switch back here. Did you hear him short shift that thing right there? Sure did. Yeah. Yeah. This right there, it gets really light on his feet to get loose there, coming down this hill. Well, he made up a lot in the braking zone to Joey Logano getting into turn 11. Here, I'm just playing with that throttle, trying to get the launch up off of 11 down this long back straightaway. See these guys compared to Reddick in that lap that he and Larson put together. I don't think you're in jeopardy there, no. Tyler Reddick. What yeah. lap you put together? These guys are trying, but they're definitely uh, behind. And I think those extra laps on those tires are, are really starting to show up. Huge lap by Tyler Reddick. Shots fired for him. Everybody at well, RCR, very, very big lap. Clint, the last time Richard Childress Racing won a pole on a road course. 1996, Dale Earnhardt at Watkins Glen. Fix that problem. You would think about aggressive race car drivers. You that look right right there. any further than Tyler Reddick. He was seven months old when that happened. <laughs> See, Logano comes in six, Blaney in eight. Regan. Oh, all smiles down here for Tyler Reddick. First career here, Paul. Tyler, you ran the Xfinity Series race yesterday, got some good experience. How much did that play a factor in getting this pole today? Well, just, it's no secret. I was absolutely terrible on road courses for a long time, and I still have a lot to learn, but I'm just, I didn't want that to be my weakness anymore. I really focused in the off season and just being better and put a lot of work into this, and this whole team did to help me get better. And um, a lot of people along the way, everyone here at RCR, AJ Allmendinger, a lot of people have played into this, and um, I just had to get my confidence up, and the Xfinity car really helped with that. Getting a top 10 with Jordan Anderson racing and qualifying and running good in that car yesterday helped. We were off in the rain yesterday in this car, but it helped me go out there and put a good lap down for his car in that 31. But it's just so cool. This just cheddar scheme is in our normal croissant colors. We've got patriotic red, white, and blue, and we got the names of 40-plus veterans that are team members at Cheddar's Kitchen, and it's just really cool to get. I wanted to get these people on this car exposure. And uh, getting a pull is a good start to it. And for me, this track, as crazy as it sounds, I want this to be my next homestead. I really wanted to put a lot into this. And when I walked the track here on on Friday morning, uh, the surface reminded me a lot of homestead. It lays a lot of rubber like it. I got no wall to pack air on, but <laughs> hopefully I can search around and find grip today in this race and get this team a good run that it deserves. Nicely done, Tyler. Congrats. Thank you. First career pole in his 52nd start in the Cup Series. Tyler Reddick will start today's Echo Park Grand Prix from the pole. The difference between Tyler Reddick and Kyle Larson was just one-tenth of a second. Let's show you where it was. It's right here. All under braking looked to me like you can see, I mean, we're not talking just a couple of feet, car lengths right there. And that goes right back to what I was saying, risk versus reward. If that thing wheel hops on you, you go from a chance of the pole to 12 that fast. There was some subtle driving differences right here again, you know, like we saw with Kurt Busch getting into this corner, straightening that out, driving harder into the corner. 
but giving that up, you see how much faster the eight car got to the throttle and beat him off the corner. That's crumbs, though. Honestly, I put this all on that uh, braking zone, getting into that uh, turn 12 harder. That's a hard thing. 187 mile an hour to 47, big difference. Whoa, up. And there's the difference, first to second, Regan. Kyle Larson came up just a little bit short in qualifying. Second position, Kyle, a strong lap for you, though. And your first laps in dry conditions on this track as well. Yeah, I was happy with that. Um, yeah, I'm pretty proud of that, actually, just to have two laps ever really around here now. And um, to be a tenth off the pole is cool. Uh, kicking myself, you know, I, I didn't attack the braking zone because um, I knew I had a good lap going to that point. I didn't want to screw it up and go in there and lock up and give it all up. But that's really where I got beat. So. Um, but you know, we'll take it. Our Hendrick car Chevy was, was good there. Um, the first round, I made big mistakes and lost a lot of time, and we were still able to you know, run a decent lap, so I thought we'd have a good shot if I just hit my marks, and, and I did. I just underdrove that one section a little bit and uh, gave up the pole, but um, pretty cool for a couple of dirt oval kids that grew up racing cycling and speedway to be on the pole at a road course. Um, so happy about that, but look forward to the race later. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks. Great run for Reddick and Larson to secure the front row. This is only the second time this year that we've had qualifying, you know, due to COVID and, and NASCAR's procedures uh, in the pandemic. It's only the eighth opportunity in his cup career that Reddick has had to qualify. Wow. And he's on the pole. <laughs> Back to Regan. Joey Logano qualifies six for this afternoon. Joey, a lot to think about this weekend. We've had dry, we've had wet. This qualifying session dry. Looks like we might get wet. Where do you think for this afternoon's race? <laughs> Expect the unexpected at this point. Um, you know, that was a lot of us. Uh, anyone that didn't run the Xfinity race, that was their first laps on a dry track, trying to figure out where we're going and trying to lay one down uh, fast. And um, I got caught up in traffic the first run, which forced us to run a second run. Tire fall off's pretty big here, actually. So. Uh, um, I feel like that hurt us a little bit in our qualifying effort. Still, I got something decent out of it. But um, I think I got a pretty fast Shell Penzo Mustang just going off of what we did there, what happened in the rain yesterday. I think the car has speed in it. Um, so either way, I think we're ready. We'll, we'll be fine either way, and it'll be a fun race no matter what. Uh, have fun this afternoon. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks. Of the drivers that had that many laps on uh, hit their tires, Joey Logano was fastest. Tyler Reddick wins the pole. Under dark and threatening skies just outside Houston, it's been a smashing day of action for the NHRA Camping World Drag Racing Series. We'll set the competition ladders coming up next on FS1 as final qualifying action from Houston is on. This is not the next generation NASCAR. Sorry, this is the IMSA Lamborghini Trofeo Series, a spec car series, cars high downforce, what, 800 horsepower. Who races these, Clint? Did you say? <laughs> I'm rich, guys. <laughs> I think I said lawyers and doctors and lead anchors. <laughs> well, all right, lawyers and doctors anyway, let's say. But uh, there are, are pros and semi-pros and amateurs all uh, all mixed in. This is going to be fun. They'll, they'll run a timed race this morning. Regan. A very strong effort for Xfinity Series driver Austin Sindrick. Looking pretty good in the Cup Series today, though. Third position. How much was yesterday a benefit to what you did today? Yeah. Obviously, having any track time definitely helps. Um, I don't feel like I put together a very clean lap, so good for Tyler. Looks like he did, so got to give him a hard time about that. But uh, overall, really happy to get our Protect Ford Mustang uh, in the top three. But uh, really, really long race ahead. Weather has no idea what it wants to do this weekend, so uh, we're all along for the ride here for a while. Good luck this afternoon. Thanks, Thanks Austin. Austin Sendrick will roll off from row two. Had, he's had a great weekend so far. Tyler Reddick, Chevrolet front row with Kyle Larson. See any surprises here? Well, everything's a surprise this weekend. <laughs> I was surprised it didn't rain in that section. I'm so not surprised. I'm excited about what I see. The opportunities. Austin Sindrick, A.J. Allmendinger, names that you don't see every weekend in the Cup Series. Yet. Wide variety of road racing experience uh, through this group. Back to and I just, I just wonder, especially as, as I see Michael McDowell, I know he was really hoping that we'd yeah. see some rain. And if we do see rain in the race later on this afternoon, will these setups that are underneath these cars be optimal or not optimal for those conditions? Truex, Denny, 
Michael McDowell. These guys are guys that I was thinking they're going to be front runners in this thing. Got a long ways to go. James Davison, who won our iRace Wednesday night, was pretty quick in practice. Veteran road racer there. And some drivers like Ryan Priest used qualifying as a practice session. He ran 16 laps. Uh, Bob Pachris reports that uh, Denny Hamlin's power steering problem was fixed. Second time he went out, all better. So they should be in good shape for the race later today. Race day coming your way at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And then the Echo Park Texas Grand Prix for the NASCAR Cup Series 230 Eastern. All right here on FS1. Congrats, Tyler Reddick, pole winner for today's race.